What's Wrong with Ruth is a pilot for an animated series created by William Reese and pitched to Cartoon Network in 2007, but for reasons unknown, it was rejected by the network. The plot revolves around Ruth who is a goat that was an outsider among her own kind. In the pilot episode, she tries to fly after being inspired by her friend Cheryl who is a bird that can fly. However, she fails and is criticized by her older brother Beep Boop for her childish antics. He suggests that she fly a kite instead. With Cheryl's help, Ruth creates a kite out of lace underwear and roses, but they both end up falling from the castle where they were trying to fly it. However, they manage to glide and use various items thrown at them by other goats as stepping stones. When the kite string breaks, Ruth falls into Cheryl's spare lace underwear which acts as a trampoline, and she lands on her brother's computer. Although the pilot was uploaded to Reese's website around 2007 after being rejected by the network, it was later removed and has been unavailable to watch until June 19th, 2022, when it was uploaded to YouTube by a user named the Retro Vault TV's archive. It was apparently discovered on an IRC chat while searching for TV rips for an archiving server. Mario vs. Donkey Kong is a Game Boy Advance puzzle platformer game released in 2005, which serves as a follow-up to the 1994 Donkey Kong puzzle platformer for the original Game Boy. Interestingly, the game had an earlier version called Donkey Kong Plus, which was actually showcased as a tech demo at E3 2002. The prototype version was designed to take advantage of the Game Boy GameCube Link Cable feature, which allowed users to create custom levels on the GameCube and then transfer them to the Game Boy Advance to play. Although several years later, the game was repurposed as Mario vs. Donkey Kong, it still retained the gameplay and concept of the early prototype. However, the level editor feature was removed from the final version of the game. If players wanted to access the hidden feature, they would have to manually edit the byte in the game's code. Interestingly, the Nintendo DS sequel to the game called Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis included a level editor feature. Sadly, only low-quality screenshots and videos of the Donkey Kong Plus tech demo are available today, as the original demo version itself never saw the light of day again. PBS Kids Cartoon Studio was a popular online program hosted on the PBS Kids website. It was first introduced in September 2011 and was aimed at providing children with a fun and creative outlet to design and share their own cartoons online. The program allowed users to create their own characters using the Build a Character function, which featured popular characters from the show Arthur and Word Girl. To save characters and use them in the video creator, a PBS Kids Go user account was also required. The video creator known as Make a Cartoon, provided users with the ability to fully animate the characters by hand, as opposed to just dragging and dropping them. The tutorial and functions of the video maker were narrated by Word Girl herself, making it a fun and interactive experience for children. The last feature, Watch Cartoons, allowed users to view other users' creations and share their own. However, in the spring of 2016, the site suddenly went into temporary maintenance without any prior warning. Eventually, on September 1st, 2016, the program was shut down permanently, leaving users with no access to the site or their creations. It is also unclear whether the assets of the site were saved or not, and if they were, it's unknown if the program would still be functional given that some features required a PBS Kids Go user account. Although the site is no longer active, there are several surviving mirrors of the program online. However, these mirrors lack the site's original functions and are no longer operational. Videos of the video creator in action can be found online uploaded by various users. On August 24th, 2021, the video maker was uploaded to Flashpoint. Although it is missing the assets for the tutorial, which can lead to softlocks and various thumbnails for items. Furthermore, the character creator is still lost, and users cannot create custom characters unless the game is modified to allow them to save the characters without requiring a PBS Kids Go account. Mize is one of Kazutoshi Sayoma's early manga works. The manga was first revealed in 2005 in the book Sayoma Kazutoshi Short Collection Sayomatsuri, which is a collection of early short mangas by Sayoma. According to reports, Mize is a story about a store that sells love and friendship. However, Sayoma was hesitant to submit it to the editor due to the unexciting nature of the story. Instead, he sealed it in his desk, and only some scenes from the manga were disclosed on the back cover of the book. Unfortunately, the full story of the manga remains unavailable, and Sayoma himself considers the story to be uninteresting. He also believes himself that it's highly unlikely that the manga will ever be made available. Back in October of 2005, when the hype for the upcoming live-action Garfield movie was at its peak, Paws Inc. released a three-disc box set featuring nine of the classic Garfield TV specials. As a bonus, the box set also included a pamphlet advertising an upcoming Nintendo DS game called Garfield Bound for Home, which was scheduled to release during the holiday season of 2005. However, the game never saw the light of day, and there is very little information available about it. The game was supposed to be published by Game Factory, which was the same company responsible for publishing other Garfield handheld games. However, the identity of the game's developer remains a mystery, as the box art contains no logo or mention of any specific company apart from the publisher. The game's plot, as described in the pamphlet, centered around a gang of streetcars invading Garfield's home and posing as Garfield himself. 
The cats forced John, Garfield's owner, to constantly purchase food for them in order to eventually bankrupt him and take over the house. Despite the initial anticipation for the game, no footage or screenshots of Garfield bound for Rome have ever surfaced online. The game remains a mystery to this day, with only the box art available for fans to see. Springwatch is a BBC2 nature documentary series that has been airing annually since 2005. Its first season was a massive success, prompting the BBC to commission a one-off special called Autumn Watch, which was later turned into a full series in 2006. Then, another spin-off series, Winter Watch, was launched in 2012. In early 2006, a preschool version of Springwatch called CBB Springwatch debuted on the CBB's channel. The show features Jackson, a character from the CBB's program The Storymakers, as its host, with other CBB stars making appearances including Jelly, Justin Fletcher, and Dogsby, Tiggs, and Mooka from The Shiny Show. Little is known about the series, but it is believed to have been inspired by the CBB show The Green Balloon Club. CBB Springwatch even won a BAFTA award in 2006. Despite this, very little footage of the show exists online. For years, the only available video from CBB Springwatch was the closing theme of Season 2, Spring Out, which was uploaded to YouTube by TTWFN on June 14th, 2007. A rip of the song from the website was then uploaded the following year by King of Hustlers 1. In 2014, Little Mad Mixer Girl X uploaded the Season 1 credit song Jump Up to YouTube. Then in 2015, Mayday51 uploaded several clips of games from the old CBB's website. A muted version of the Season 1 intro was found on David McHugh's website and was later posted to YouTube by Mayday51 again in 2018. On the same day, Mayday51 also uploaded a short fragment of a 2006 episode, which was actually found on the Vimeo account of Nick Mercer, which was the actor who played Jackson. Finally, on February 24th, 2021, a full episode of CBB Springwatch is made available online, but as of this recording, there are still lots of episodes that are lost. The Mezga Family and the Computer was a 2005 Hungarian animated series, which served as a sequel to the original 1969 series of the same name. The original series was created by Joseph Ramhanyi and Joseph Nepp and animated by Pannonio Film Studio. The storyline of the 2005 series revolved around the Mezga Family adapting to modern technology like the internet and computers. The series was produced by Studio Axis KFT, and three episodes were ordered to be made. Unfortunately, only two episodes were completed and officially released, as the show was cancelled due to the economic downturn in Hungary at the time. The first two episodes of the series can be found online with ease, but the other 11 episodes are lost. It is uncertain whether any pre-production materials like animatics, storyboards, or scripts for the remaining episodes exist online or not. There is also no confirmation on whether all 11 episodes were ever completed or not. Nonetheless, one of the artists who worked on the series has shared some of his work on his blog, which provides some insight into what the series might have looked like. AJR is a popular indie pop band that consists of three brothers, named Adam, Jack, and Ryan. The band is known for creating catchy tunes like Bang and World's Smallest Violin. In fact, their third album called Neo Theater managed to clinch the first spot on Billboard's Top Rock Albums chart. In April 2021, the band posted a unique audio-only interview called The Red Interview around the same time that their fourth album, OK Orchestra, was released. Despite the abundance of AJR interviews available on the internet, The Red Interview stands out as a peculiar one. Only a few individuals have claimed to have listened to the interview in its entirety, and it's currently not available online. The band is suspected of taking it down, similar to what they did with their album Venture. Attempts to trace the origin of a small logo in the right corner through reverse image searching have been unsuccessful, and the red background image used in the interview is too common to yield any meaningful results. While it was hosted on an unknown site, a small portion of the interview was shared on Twitter by username Apato Images. Unfortunately, the clip is only 37 seconds long, out of the original 9 minutes and 19 seconds. According to some people, the full interview is just as chaotic as the short clip, which could be the reason why it was taken down.